Hi, my name is Matt Poach, and I typically have been a, a volunteer at the Sorco Village in the work class, where they make wooden shoes, sometimes known as clogs or clompin. In that 25 years, I have enjoyed making a lot of wooden shoes and sharing some history and some tidbits on how wooden shoes are made and why they've been worn. Unfortunately, we're not in the work workplace now with the what's all going on. We're going to do a little virtual deal where I'm going to teach you a little bit about wooden shoes and how they're made and give you a little insight on the history of wooden shoes. Wooden shoes have been around for quite some time. There is some legend that wooden shoes were around Egyptian and Roman times in kind of a form of sandals, but they're more well known obviously for the Dutch and what they've done in there. The Dutch have kind of made the wooden shoes a little bit more staple for what you understand wooden shoes to be. Originally a wooden shoe was just a piece of wood with leather on it, more like a sandal, and then eventually they did become a wooden shoe like we're more common to today because of necessity of just keeping yourself safe from cattle and from fishing and hooks and nails and all sorts of just hazards that were around at that time. Wooden shoes <coughs> were originally made with an axe where they took a block of wood and they would take the axe and chop on the side. They kind of get a rough shoe look like this. Eventually it'd be a little bit more shoeish looking. And then from there it would go onto a bench and a lock knife. The bench was typically a log with legs, a little table, and then a long knife that was attached to it. The, sh wooden, the wood shoe carver would put the shoe on there and he would chisel. He would take the knife and he would cut off the sides here and here and smooth it out a lot more. And then use some hand tools with um, spoon knives to clean out this part and this part. Eventually, as all things do progress, machineries came around to make the job a lot easier and a lot a lot quicker is typically when you use hand tools it would take about three hours to make a pair of shoes and a good Dutchman would work a good 12-14 hours would only get to three to four pairs done in a day which really isn't that much and you couldn't make a lot of money so when the time when the machinery came around it made the process go a lot quicker and typically with machinery you could probably get a pair of shoes done in an hour which would get you a lot more shoes done in your work day than prior. When it came to machineries, if we were at the village, we have four different machineries. We have a bandsaw, we also have a pattern lathe, and we also have a pattern router, and then we also still have the bench with the lock knife on it and the hand tools that were from the original wooden shoe carver who was carving shoes in Pella. Typically when you started off with the hand with the power tools you would have the block of wood. It would be a square block of wood. On the bandsaw you would cut off all four corners and after the four corners are cut off you would take this block of wood and you put it on the pattern lathe. The pattern would look a lot like this. On the pattern lathe it would rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. The fun fact of that is you do not have to change a pattern out to get a left or right shoe. It all depends on clockwise or counterclockwise and getting a left or right shoe. After a little time on the pattern lathe, you'd have what looks like majority of the shoe. Unfortunately, you still can't get your foot in it. Again, like the pattern lathe, you would move on to the next machine where you would have the pattern router bits. You would have on that you would have a bar that would guide you around here and the bit would spin around and clean out the main side. Originally it would go down like this and then it would tip over and then you could get the insides of the shoe. From that then you would have this shoe. It looks like a shoe, it fits like a shoe, but the women don't like when your shoes look like little pigs. From there you would go to the lock knife with a lock knife, it would then you would take the knife and you would carve off the ends. You would make it smooth, 
and round on the back, but it would still be a little rough. You would, at that point, you would find your other left or right shoe, you would pair them up, typically hung from the rafters of the workshop where they would dry for six weeks before they're able to actually be finished. From there, they would actually then sand them down or smooth them out. Typically, uh, glass was used originally before sandpaper was around. This, once the shoe is smooth, at that point, then it's ready to be painted. Again, just like cultures now, different shoes had different purposes um, how they were finished. Typically, a work boot would just be like a black or blue. They wouldn't go to a lot of ornate paint jobs or carving jobs on that because when you're in a farm or fishing or whatnot, it doesn't really matter as much. They were fancy shoes like you can see here where they had their ornate designs. Sometimes the family would actually have a family crest. They would put the family crest on the shoe. There's also um, shoes that had different jobs. Like the, when you had a fisherman shoe, they would have nails or stuff in the bottom to help walk on ice and stuff. But one of my more interesting fun shoes that I like are the wedding shoes. A wedding shoe, would be a typical shoe and during the time of courtship the gentleman would take a shoe and would carve a beautiful ornate design on these shoes and then at the time of engagement he would present these shoes to her as well as the other steps with engagement the bride would wear them on the wedding day and the legend has it that he would sit at the foot of the bed the entire wedding or the entire marriage of the family Wooden shoes have been made from different woods. A willow or poplar was or usually used. Um, there's been different popular. A yellow poplar or two of popular have been a little bit more popular when it comes to that. Um, shoes are interesting that once they um, are cut, they're done right away so the wood is green, hence why you have to dry them then once they're dry they are a very hard shoe um, it has actually been proven that they are just as good or better than steel toed shoes and some doctors have been proven that wooden shoes are still somewhat better than some of the shoes now and actually if you go to the netherlands now there are still a few farmers and fishermen and gardeners who still wear a, sh a wooden shoe around So I, I hope this time has been very informative to you. Unfortunately, you don't get all the dust and loud machinery and stuff. You can hear me a little clearer now. But if you ever do have the opportunity in the future to come down to Pella during the actual festival, I do encourage you to come. Come down to the village. I would love to meet you and have a chat with you in person and show you the actual carving on the nights. And you can see firsthand the machinery and just how awesome it is the whole process thank you very much for your time and i hope you have a great day